great. Welcome to Siola Safari Secrets. Um, we want to find the story beneath the story. We come to these beautiful places like um, Chundu Island and we see beautiful things, but we don't realize that beneath all of that are people that make this happen. And so I've got Dodley with me here. Uh, Dodley is a concession manager and Dodley's been a tour guide, I'm using the wrong word, professional guide for the last 40 years, 39 years to be exact. Welcome to Siola Safari Secrets. Our Siola podcasts share the most amazing stories which occur at the back of the house. These are out of sight stories that support the remarkable Siola guest experience. Our hope is that these stories of intrigue demonstrate the wonder and amazement of the Siola bush experience. Dolly, what, what is a professional guide and how do you become a professional guide in Zimbabwe? Okay, um, it's quite difficult to become a professional guide in Zimbabwe. For you to become a guide, you start um, by writing exams, the first exams, which is just theory. When you pass those exams, um, they have four papers, uh, which is Habits and Habitats, Parks and Wildlife Law, then you also write the fire up. Okay, when you pass those exams, you become what we call a learner professional guide. When you get that license, that means you are allowed to do game drives in an open vehicle and you are not allowed to get down from the vehicle and do a walking safari. For you to do a walking safari, you have to become what you call a professional guide. So after getting your first license, what you call a learner professional guide, you must hold that for at least two years before you can sit for your full license. Okay, on the full license, you have to take what you call the proficiency test. And um, the proficiency test is done once every year. What you have to do is, you have to go and set up a camp anywhere in the bush. Your examiners or a parks and wildlife and um, hunters and guides association will tell you where the venue where you're going to have your exams. Okay, they will say, for example, your exams are going to be in Mana Pools, which is like a thousand kilometers from here. So you have to take all the equipment with you, your tents, your food, your barman, your waiter. It's like you're setting up a mobile safari. And your examiners will be testing you on that, your camping experience. And they'll also be testing you on your firearm. And they'll also be testing you on your trekking, your camera skills, your first aid. You need to know all of those things. So while you're holding your learner professional guard license, that's the time that you'll be studying those things. Okay, so that by the time you go and do those proficiency, you are ready to tackle it. It's an exam that you don't want to do twice. Okay. So if you are not ready, do not go and do it. Because if you fail it once, for you to go for the second time, you know exactly what to expect, then it becomes more difficult. So um, once you pass that exam, which, is, which includes uh, shooting, <coughs> animal tracking, and uh, bird identification, and you know, identifying your flora and fauna. So once you pass that exams, that means you are allowed to do a walking safari in any national park in Zimbabwe. Okay. okay. For you to get that full license, it'll take you at least four years. It's like you're doing a degree. That's how long it takes you to become a professional guide. I've known some guys that are learning a professional guide for over 30 years. And um, they have done those exams once they failed and they don't want to do it again because it's quite difficult. Because when you go camping, when you're doing your profession to test, which is practicals, you're camping for seven days. And they put you into groups of about five. Then um, each group will have two examiners that will be observing you on those seven days. Then they'll put everything together and say, okay, Dudley has done this, his tracking was good, his shooting was very good, then he can pass his license. Once you get, once you get that license, that means you're allowed to do walking safaris. It's the most difficult license to get. We got licenses in Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Namibia, but the license that you get in Zimbabwe is the most highly considered one. Professional guards in Zimbabwe can get a job in Botswana, in Zambia, and Tanzania because the training that we get to qualify for that license is of more high standard compared to the license that we get in South Africa. Yeah. So in brief, that's all I would say because I can go on and uh, say a lot of things to become a guy. So I think what I'm really hearing is that um, you've got to be committed if you want to become a professional guide and uh, you've got to be prepared to push through some barriers yeah. and um, but the training's uh, uh, brilliant. Uh, Dodley, what do you most enjoy or love about being a professional guide? 
You know, I love meeting different people and I uh, also um, like walking out there in the bush. I love my trees as well and, um, you know, identifying birds. Yeah, I would say I love every part of becoming a professional guide. Everything that I see out here, I enjoy it. I can't live in town. I can't. My my life has been always in the bush, so I can't stay in town. If you tell me to go into town, you're putting me under pressure. And um, I've always say, like, I was talking about our kids growing up as well. When we go shopping, I would rather stay in the car, look up to the kids than going out shopping. I can't go shopping. I can't go into the bank. When I go into town, sometimes I even forget to lock my car because yeah. I'm so used to the, you know, life in the bush. Yeah. Yeah. I so get you, Dondi. Um, I definitely don't, don't want to go into shopping centers either. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, you know, once once the bush is part of you, the openness is just um, something you you can't explain to people. I don't think. You mentioned in as we were talking just before this uh, podcast about a mentor. How important are mentors in the role of the professional guide? Oh yeah, sorry, I, um, I missed that. So while you get your learner professional guide. You must be attached to a mentor or someone who's qualified already. So he is like your tutor. He's the guy who's mentoring you for you to um, to start towards a professional guide license. Then during that time, you're working under the tutorship of a professional guide, someone who's qualified already. You have what you call a logbook that you'll be logging everything. Because during that time, with that uh, mentor, if he's doing a walking safari, as a learner professional guide, you are asked to lead that walking safari so that you get experience, so that you can log that as well mm-hmm. in your book. So when you're going to do exams, you'll say, okay, my mentor is John Stevens. He's the guy that taught me, you know, how to walk in the bush. I did a walking safari with him and he signed on this log book. I walked with Mike and um, in Zambezi National Park for three hours. And we encountered elephants, buffalo, and I approached the elephants. And you write all those things down. So examiners will look at that as well. How many walks you have done before you're going for the professions test. That's very considered as well. Right. Yeah. So, Dodi, as I'm chatting to you, uh, I realize that if anybody comes to Chundu Island, they're in very, very safe hands. And the training, the professionalism is here. And... You know, just in conclusion, the thing that I really get about chatting to you is when we find something we love and we do what we love, we have found something of excellence, something of brilliance. And I just so get that in chatting to you. Find something you love, live into your loves, and I imagine you're going to be a happy person. Yeah, yeah. This is what I love for my life, you know. I've got a lot of friends and my friends sometimes think I'm crazy. Like if I go on holiday, you know, where do I go? I go out on safari. Yes. And my friends were always ask me, but you're coming from the bush. How come you're going into the bush as well? So it's something that I love. Yeah. I do it for passion. If I wanted to go and work in a hotel, I would go and work at Victoria Falls Hotel, which is a big hotel, but I love safari lodges. Yeah. Great. Dolly, thanks for sharing your love with us. And uh, I hope that most of us out there can find love in what we do just like you have. Thank you. Thank you.